Welcome back to another episode of the Evo 6 STI Killer presented by Coilrad. Today we are gonna break down the engine. Our mission is simple. This motor needs a refresh. So what we're gonna do is tear it down completely, look at all the parts, and then figure out what we need to order. We know we're gonna do pistons and rods, and we're gonna do some fresh head valve train stuff. So without further ado, I think the first thing we need to do is separate the transfer case and the transmission from the engine block. Before we remove any bolts, we wanna make sure that we're gonna be diligent, and you guys too, if you're doing this at home, and that is to bag and tag every nut and bolt coming off here, because we've learned in the past, when you don't do that, and you're putting back together an M3, and there's a, bunk, a bucket of bolts, and you don't know what it is, it's problematic. So, pro tip, make sure to bag and tag everything, especially if you're tearing a motor down. And now it is on to removing the transfer case here. Our gap is opening up. I don't think there's a, uh, a like a pin in there that, uh, like a wrist pin almost? Is that what you would call Snap it? Ring Snap ring? Snap ring, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the gap is coming, I can see it's oh, yeah. slowly coming out. Yeah. Just a matter of like wiggling and going back and forth with it. Let's get in there, come on girl. This is how the rest of the engine disassembly is going to go, but we're going to be here a while. Yeah. <laughs> so after about 20 minutes of fighting with this thing... It wasn't just, 20 minutes, Pete. It just felt like 20 minutes. But I feel... It was, it was to a me, it felt like an it, hour, okay? Yeah, just, Too much time has been yeah. wasted on getting the stamp transfer case off, and that's because we've never done this before. We don't have instructions, so we're kind of just thinking, oh, it's common sense, you take it apart. But what I just noticed is when, you're, when we're shaking this or moving it out, this side of the input shaft is also moving in. So I suspect we have to take it off. <laughs> Easy peasy. Look at that. Wow. Well, okay now, let's see. Can I take this whole transfer case off now? Oh, DP! <laughs> oh, uh, the manual. No manual, yes. We need that E, e Online manual, yeah, or whatever it's yeah. called. Yeah, manual online. We should have bought one of the one for the Evo, but uh, wow, there's a saying I remember back in the day, and it was RTFM. And anytime somebody posted in the forums, someone had a question like, "Oh, how do you do? How, how do you do this? How do you do that?" It was RTFM, which means read, read the manual. manual. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We are just down to the last bolt here that is holding in or holding the transmission to the engine block. And I find with these, you can mix the bolts up quite easily. There are certainly uh, different lengths most of the time. So another quick tip of what we usually do is, let me see if I can get this guy out first. Come on. There we go, all right. So what we usually do is take a piece of cardboard and start with one bolt at the top and then work our way around as you can see. And this guy is the last one that went here. So we're gonna poke them through and now you know where your transmission bolts go. So DP, am I gonna be able to just Hand wiggle, ball it off wiggle this one off or is this gonna be a, uh, a transfer case Let's find situation out. here? Let's see what- Where's Moose when you need him? What happens? Oh, you know what? I just don't feel like any of this has been off before. Yeah. So I think, let's see if I can uh, give it the old mallet tap here a couple times and Oh yeah, space is happening. I'm resorting to the pry bar now, and it looks like we have movement. We have action happening. I'm gonna raise this engine just slightly. The issue I find right now is it is resting on the gearbox. Yeah. So I kinda have to lift the whole thing up, get it to move, but it's coming. Yeah, it's definitely oh, coming. Yeah. Yep. yep. Come on, girl. Keep giving her a good shoot. Shake and bake. Yep, yep, yep. Come on, just, why? You just, again. Oh, you know what it is? There is something holding it up. Okay. 
<laughs> this is a pull type clutch. Oh, so it's not a push, so the out. fork has to of come course. out. <laughs> it's like the ST1000. Uh, so I indeed had to release the clutch fork. I think it's actually the uh, main pushing throw up bearing. Yeah, there you go. There and, wow, just like that it comes out. So let me quickly show you here. Let's pull this gearbox down. And uh, as you can see here, this, this is a pull type. So it has the uh, throw up bearing built into it and does not release like most push type system so what you got to actually do is you you use your you use your finger to pull the fork forward and then you kind it will release if you use a screwdriver you just pry it in between there and see this little spring clip here so all I did was grab a screwdriver and I stuck it in there and then push this down as I push the fork inwards and that releases the whole system so pretty simple before I go pulling that clutch, I actually wanted to ask you guys, what is the best way to remove this oxidization on aluminum? I know a wire brush works well, but is there a compound or like a liquid or something that I can spray on that'll help take this off? Because uh, it certainly is an eyesore. I'd like to get it back to looking more like that. I know this is dirty, but at least this looks somewhat respectable in an engine bay versus this, which kind of looks like it's just rotting and nasty right all oh, that whiteness so we've been talking about maybe a vapor blaster or yeah maybe something like that like dry ice blasting yes. or or sandblasting like i know that'll take it off it's just do you really want to sandblast in this area i don't know so if you guys have a, a quick kind of home remedy or solution clr something like that let me know let's have a look at our evo clutch wow this thing actually looks in very good shape lots of life left on it and it looks like the last time it was done is in Japan. Check that out, if I'm not mistaken. That is some Japanese writing there, right, DP? It sure is. Wow, very Which, cool. Uh, just goes to show that the stance life is not very hard on the clutch, is it? <laughs> no, it's not. We're going to be much harder on it, that's for sure. It is nice to have this engine on an engine stance. So we can finally get to some serious work. And I think we're going to start off by trying to remove this manifold and turbo setup it is very rusty and very grungy. I think this car had one hell of a exhaust leak. Like this um, gasket here is absolutely destroyed. I did soak these the other day. So they have been soaking for about 24 hours. Let's see if actually, you know what? I'm going to start off with the big bolt, the largest one, the 14 mil on the side here. This should crack off pretty easily. Yes. All right. Success. He's got Yes, success. Now comes my least favorite part, getting at these nuts here that are like super tight against the manifold and you can only really reuse a wrench, but so far they've been going pretty good, so. Okay. Oh, see, it just, this is what I don't like. There it goes, okay. All right, just has that initial feel like it's gonna snap and then it goes away and you can't, you can't force, ah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's like the manifold's so close. Yeah, the it. manifold is just like, literally, look at that. Well, I hope, um, you know, usually when you're in this type of situation, this has been tightened mm -hmm. with an open-ended wrench, so there's not a ton of torque on it, but yeah. we're gonna find out. Oh, yeah, oh, yes! Success! It went, I think it went. Yes, okay, so that is, uh, this is actually the easier one of the two, because check out, Look at this one, Dave. I don't even, like, this one here. Look at it, you, you can't even see it. It's I right here. Oh, like, look at it. Oh, it's way down in that abyss. Wow. Yeesh. We're down to our last nut. Does that sound weird? <laughs> it did to me. That's, I, I hope all of you got a good laugh, <laughs> laugh out of that one, but we truly are. Yeah. And it is the one that I fear the most. So let's see what happens here, guys. Let's see. Oh, did that strip? Is that just the wrench slipping? Oh, it looks like it's turning. It's turning? Yeah, I think Yes, so. thank you. Okay, so disaster averted, no broken studs or nuts. So we're gonna take this manifold off next here. Is it safe to say that PT's uh, done nutting? Let's see. Ooh, Ooh man. 
Looks like that gasket has seen better days. It is fused. Look at the rust in that area. Oh, I just puked some coal. Cool. It's time to have a look. And belt actually looks to be in decent shape. I don't see any cracking or anything like that. So there's more Japanese writing here. So I suspect it has been serviced. Oof, look at that. The actual gear has been eating into the cover. That's an odd thing. I don't know if that means the cover was being pushed against it. I can't imagine. Somehow, it's weird. Yeah, yeah, I can't imagine that. I mean, it does kind of look like there's a bit of a bow in the middle there. Four 12 mil bolts. And is this going to come off? Or is there, is it held on by this? main bolt here i don't know dave this is kind of weird, weird to me but yeah it's got that square hole in yeah. it for like a breaker bar i don't know what that's yeah. about well maybe we'll just crack this guy loose as well i mean we, we might as well we're tearing all this apart anyways yeah but check out the rust here oh looks like i'm getting a new pulley right there so i spoke too soon look at that comes off like a champ and this bolt is actually holding the actual timing gear I don't even know what the proper term for that is, but sprocket or whatever. Yeah, you, want to call it. you know what? I gotta say, man, Mitsubishi gets a win on this one. Look how easy that came off. Like yeah. that 2J one is a nightmare. All right, time to look at this entire timey belt system. Man, even this plastic, I think this is plastic. Yeah, it's even got that like nasty crud on it. Ugh, do not like that. Gonna have to clean all of this up. All right. See a lot of rusty be oh, of course one last bolt come on is that the theme here i keep forgetting <sighs> all right there we go and let's have a look well it looks old it looks rusty wow and rusty like yes usually that rusty yeah inside. especially like this area here and whatnot wow. so Oh uh, man, that is not good to see rust no, in there. No, no it's not, but we'll have to clean all of this up. Well, our tensioner was working guys, that's a relief. From my DSM days, I know these were always a point of failure, so we are definitely replacing that. Let's pull this belt off and let's see if this was a, an aftermarket special or a true OEM Mitsubishi piece. Genuine Mitsubishi, and now that I look at it, this belt is actually more worn than I thought. It's got a little bit of like, I don't know if you guys can see that, but cracking in the top portion of the belt. And underneath here, uh, yeah, it's a well-worn belt. So I'm curious whether I need to keep this emissions related part or not. You guys tell me in the comments. We're going performance here, so is this needed or not? Let me know. And I found a little interesting thing here, D Dave. Is this, uh, is this like a, a centipede, a millipede, a slug, or, or what is this? Look at that. Yeah, Ugh. that's nasty. It is a time capsule from something. Here comes the intake manifold. Okay. This one is gonna need a full cleanup job. Oh, you can see there was a little bit, by the looks of it, oil leaking into, I think this is cylinders one and two. Yeah. But more importantly, we've got ourselves an issue with our uh, drain, <laughs> our dipstick pipe here. It does not want to come out. I'm removing the knock sensor here. And I know from my DSM days, these used to kind of fall apart from the rear and create phantom knock. Why don't you guys post in the comments, let me know, should I replace this with a new unit or are these pretty good? And check this out. This is an old oil pressure. Or, yeah, this looks like a pressure sending unit. It says OMP on it, so I assume there were some OMP gauges in this vehicle from its past life. And uh, this is tapped into the block here. Now, I don't, I don't think they actually tap the block, but I think I'm gonna have to uh, plug this with kind of like an Allen style bolt. Apparently. Pete's letting me do some things on uh, the 4G. I, I figured the spark here. plugs would be pretty easy. You're yeah, not gonna sabotage my motor. It's behind the scenes, everyone. I've been doing all the work here. He, he's just like, he's just on on camera, guys. So pulling out these uh, 
coil on plug type deals. Is this the factory setup? It on is, here? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting the way they like chain them together off mm -hmm. of just the two coil two There's like parts, an igniter, but... I think, in one of them, and then it, uh, sh I don't know, shoots off to the other one. Yeah, yeah, weird deal. So, uh, interestingly, when you pull these out of the hole, they oh, seem to whoa. separate did you, from did the you bottom break there. That? No, well, look, it, it looks like it's designed to do that. I don't know. What? Anyway. Oh my God, yeah. I think you just broke it. You know what this wouldn't happen on, Pete? An STI, this wouldn't happen on an STI. Yeah, it'd be so four hours for us to swap those. Get yourself a better car next time, man. Come on. Come on, come on, yeah. No, there's still more in there. Oh, what, what happened? Come on. Oh man. What a hot mess this is. Why is this? Oh, there it goes. Done. What a piece of junk. So what do you think it's going to look like in there? Um, good question. I mean... Judging by the oil, it's hard. It, I, I think it's going to be pretty filthy. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be like sludgy, but it'll be... No, like, I don't think so. It'll be dirty. I don't think it'll be terrible, but we'll, we'll find out in, in a moment. Come on, baby. The valve cover hasn't been off in a very long time, oh, I man. can tell. Right. Oh, look at it. Wow. It's clean. It's actually super clean. Wow. We are moving on to pulling out the camshafts here and uh, already removed the cam caps on that side. And I'm just, <laughs> I'm just cracking these last couple loose. Apparently I need a little extra leverage and uh, I'm just going to relieve the pressure on all these evenly so the cam kind of, you know, comes up evenly. And with the cam ankle sensor removed from this one camshaft, which by the way, it was a little tricky. There's a plate on the sensor you gotta remove to get a bolt out. And this puppy pop, pops out of here, no problem. Actually, before we pull the head, we're gonna just pull the spark plug. Pull a couple out already. And uh, they look okay. They're uh, well-worn and they're AC Delco. So they're not, uh, I That's assume- That's the puzzling part. That's not the factory plug. AC Delco? Yeah, someone put the El Cheapies in here. That's like a, a GM product in a Mitsubishi. Yeah, I, I shouldn't say are, GM, but it's uh, Nova domestic. Spec. It's Nova Scotia spec for sure. Just uh, detensioning the head bolts here and much like the camshafts, uh, we're just loosening them from the inside out to try to release the pressure as evenly as we can. So we'll just like slowly back them out. I don't think we're likely to warp ahead, but you just want to be careful with this stuff because Finding another 4G63 head, if something were to go wrong, wouldn't be a lot of fun. So these are pretty snug, as you'd expect with a motor that sees boost. And it uses this unusual uh, 12, 12 point, point yeah. is that a 12 mil, I believe? Yeah. Yep. So I'll just keep easing them out. And uh, once everything feels detention, we'll pop this, this puppy off. So I've got all the head bolts out, except two of them that don't want to come out. You can see, oh, sorry. You can see I, no matter how hard I pull on it, it's like there's a, a nut on the back side, which obviously doesn't make any sense. Can we get her off? Just yeah, we should. All right. Well, there you go. And uh, it looks fine, but yeah, these bits so weird. There's something that's causing the bolt. Oh, I think I see what's happening. It's just the the bolt itself is like getting caught up to see. So now it should just slide out. Well, let's put a little oil on it, but. Otherwise, there's no holes in the pistons. Yeah, yeah, this was a running motor, so it's so, okay. Uh, the head gasket looks... Head gasket looks OEM. Just looking in cylinders one and four here, and uh, I think they look pretty darn good. I am by no means an expert. I have been uh, educating myself a little bit over on HB Academy's website. Uh, ben and Andre there were kind enough to give Pete and I access to all of their online uh, courses, which are pretty amazing. And one of their courses is uh, an engine building course. I've been watching that learning about what we're gonna to need to do to reassemble this motor. And they also have uh, class or classes, not classes, but uh, episodes, I guess you'd call them, about disassembling an engine. Nevertheless, without having really looked at an Evo engine before, apart before, I, I'm by no means an expert, but you can look closely here and see that there's still good cross hatching left in like the top two or three inches of the cylinder here. And as you get a little deeper down, you can see on the front and rear sides where the piston skirts rub on those bores that they have sort of worn through that cross hatching. So I don't really know how to evaluate that as far as the amount of wear it goes. We do normal. We do have a bore ish? gauge, so yeah. we, can, we can put a bore gauge here and see if things are still perfectly round. But I think our plan really is just to tear this down and take it to a machinist who will properly uh, evaluate the bores for us and let us know if he thinks we need to uh, overboard them a bit. 
So we pulled out all those little 10 mil bolts around the edge of the pan here. And as we showed you early on, this pan has seen better days. It uh, took a hit in the name of the low life. So Pete found a new pan from a fan in Japan. I think so. Who's shipping it over to us. So we should have a brand new OE pan and splitting this Used, off. Used, but uh, not dented. Oh, okay. Well, splitting this off was not the easiest. It's on there pretty solidly, but here we go. Well, metal chunks, we win. I don't see any uh, scary stuff in there as we would have expected. Just pulling the uh, last nuts off the rod caps here. Oh, there, crank's turning on me a little bit. And uh, as you can see, we've got the other three piston and rod combos out and they're all looking really good. There is a fair bit of wear on the piston skirts as we'll show you now, but uh, otherwise the bearings look like they're in good shape. Oh, well, there's some strange scoring on them that we'll show you in a minute to see what you guys think of it because they all seem to have it which is a little curious but let's show you right now unlike our bmw bearings you can see there's really no like crazy wear through the the surface coating on the bearing and there's no like discoloration or signs of the uh, hot spotting or anything like that so i think overall we've got a pretty healthy bottom end here and it's quite interesting seeing how these float on the crank journals just on that thin layer of oil that they sit on. Like it, these just like literally just kind of like float around on here. It's, it's quite amazing how just that thin layer of oil allows these to spin so freely. So let's uh, pop that last piston and rod out of there and we'll show you a close up of how those look. So here's our OE, OE piston and rod combo. And as you can see, the skirts have these fairly significant wear areas on them, but they're not really scary. I think that's probably pretty normal wear, but I think so. I, again, I'm, it I'm not like an it expert. It scoring. So. It just looks like normal wear. Yeah. Like yeah. If there were grooves, pretty significant ones there, I'd be worried. But yeah, again, nothing... we don't know. You guys post in the comments. Let us know. Like I looked at all the rings on all the other pistons. There's no sign of like any cracking or damaging to any of the rings. You can see the ring gaps are aligned nicely too. So no, these this isn't a Subaru motor. <laughs> that's right. So there are no Ringland <laughs> no failures, Ringland failures in sight on the 4Gs. Here. I guess the rods is the weak spot, isn't it, Pete? You I think so, yeah. Good to maybe 350 wheel before. Uh, yeah, I couldn't find any definitive information on the uh, the six motor. I know it's similar to the five, and from what I was reading, they just they don't hold much more than 350 horsepower. Right. So uh, it just made sense for us to do this in case I, I need to turn up the wick, and I don't want to be right at that threshold where I. I uh, ventilate the block like Adam LZ did. <laughs> the only way you're going to keep up with the abandoned STI, Pete, is to turn up the wick. So you're going to need some beefier rods. We are moving on to removing the front and rear cover. As a matter of fact, we've already unbolted the rear cover here. As you can see, <laughs> it won't clear the engine stand. So we'll just pop that off when we take the crank out. But in hindsight, we could have taken that off before mounting it up. Yeah, we so should have. Pro tip from us pros here in the 4G63 world. So we're leaving the oil pump on because we want to leave it, it, it drives the balance shaft here and we want to leave it all as like one unit, one assembly. So I think we're going to be able to take the cover off with the pump and both balance shafts all in one. But we're, we're about, going to find out. We're about to find out. And you deleted your balance shafts once in your DSM I did life, in my right? uh, 1G Talon and they rattled the engine so much that bolts were coming loose off of it. So I vowed to never do it again. So we're a small, uh, you know, decrease in rotating mass i don't think it's worth it and as you can see there wow that did come out pretty easy it sure did and a pretty cool design and yeah i can see how removing those would free up some uh some horsepower, i mean it's but... like i think it's hard to say right but maybe 5 10 crank horsepower max and just give it another it's, pound it's, of boost yeah bro. but yeah exactly That's all you and gotta do you just get so much vibration i yeah. was daily driving that car mm -hmm. and for me it just made no sense literally it rattled the bolt loose that fell into the timing belt and oh, almost blew up my timing belt moving on to taking off the girdle here something my grandpa used to do in high school don't get to use the word girdle much anymore <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> these have some serious torque in them and like everything else i'm just gonna back them out from middle to edge in a gradual way. In the good old days, I built a Honda D-Series motor. That's how old I am. And the engine builder that I worked with, he kind of like walked me through it. I did all the work, but he was like looking over my shoulder. And one of his things was he never wanted to put, he wanted to put this bolt back into that hole. He didn't want to use it in a different hole, even though they're the same bolts. 
because he felt like this thread and that thread were like mated together nicely. So he, he would number these very carefully and he put them all back in the same hole that they came out of. However, uh, watching a video on HP Academy, what they recommend, to do is, recommend doing is actually chasing every threaded hole in the engine to make sure that you get really clean engagement of the bolt into those holes because if there's any kind of contamination to those threads or like the threads are out of, out of pitch at all, it affects the torque quite a lot. So Andre was saying you really want to chase those down and make sure you've got good clean threading because that is how you get the most consistent and accurate uh, torque. So that's something we're going to do with this engine. I don't want to drop this thing. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Oh, there she goes. Woo! Oh, there's Look the mighty that. 4G crank. It looks like a dinosaur spine, doesn't it? it? Looks like it's ready to make some horsepower. And oh, she's got nice oil squirters in there too. Look at that. Come on, 4G has all of that and look at the bearings not bad at all look they look saying, good. DP. they look really good wow now that we've got the head and the block and the crank all stripped down and ready to go to the machine shop we figured we'd better show you what we're going to put in the cylinder head because i think we've decided we're going to send the head to him and have him actually assemble it for us because there's going to be a little bit of work to install the valves and everything so it is time for a quick show and tell and uh, if you watch the sti engine build series or that whole series you'll be familiar with the fact that we ran the GSC S1 camshafts in that engine, and we're gonna run the same ones in this engine because we gotta keep this a fair fight, everybody. And uh, we know that these billet shafts from GSC Power Division will make good power. In fact, uh, they say that uh, typically just dropping these straight into an Evo 4 to Evo 8, you'll pick up 30 to 55 wheel horsepower depending on what turbo you're running them with. They are friendly to use with a stock turbo or a larger aftermarket turbo. And you can use them with the stock valve train, but they do recommend upgrading to uh, their valve train components if you're gonna rev the motor a little bit higher or run it at higher boost pressures. So uh, what else can I tell you about this? As you can see, it is a fully billet unit that has uh, specs of, I believe, 268 degrees of advertised duration on both the intake and exhaust cam, as well as 11 mil lift on the intake and 10 and a half mil lift on the exhaust. But if you want more specs, they actually have a very detailed spec sheet on their website so you can go and check that out there if you need to know like the center lines and all that kind of stuff for when you're degreeing the cams i'd like to know about the coating it's the coating is nice cool, yeah right? it does look good I, I i don't know what they've done for the coating there but uh pretty fancy so uh that is going to be the the uh the heart and soul of the cylinder head but beneath that we will be running their valve train components so uh these are their their uh standard size valves this is an intake valve we also have exhaust uh, valves for two, of course. And as you can see, they are uh, back cut to reduce weight, which will allow you to rev the motor higher. And they've actually um, flow tested these for uh, maximum flow over the, the shape of the head here. So again, they're, they're designed for a high performance application. And you can see they've actually put a very unique like swirl finish on the backside of the head oh, here. Yeah. That too is supposed to aid with flow. And you can also see that they've micro polished the shaft of the valve here, so it's extremely smooth. And that allows for uh, freer valve motion, so you should ha shouldn't have any kind of binding issues. So that is the secret sauce with the valves, although they're also a very strong and very heat resistant. They actually use a special metal uh, and slightly different metal in the intake than the exhaust valve. I'm not really sure why that is. I guess maybe they're exposed to different like heat loads, but in any case, they, they are meant to upgrade durability and also be uh, lighter. So again, you can rev the motor a little higher. Speaking of rev revving the motor higher, titanium retainers. Th these are of course a, a weight savings item. So again, by reducing weight in the valve train, you're able to rev the motor a little bit higher, but ultimately you need a, uh, a stiffer spring to uh, survive at those higher RPMs. You, know, you don't want to get into a coil bind situation. So these are their TVS springs, which again will allow us to rev this thing a little bit higher. The cam is spec'd for like, I think they said 3000 to 7500 RPM. So I don't think we're going to rev it past 7,500 RPM, but I mean, that's up to Pete. I don't know. I don't know how. I'm going full I'm, STI spec. You're going 8,500. 9K on this puppy? Oh, of course. No, I think, I think 7,500 sounds pretty <laughs> good. plenty for you? Maybe eight grand if I feel lucky, right? <laughs> we'll find out how badly you want to win. And of course, uh, along with the valve train components, you can also uh, opt for their valve guides and valve seals. These are a Viton seal, which uh, I suppose is just a more durable type of material than your typical seal material. I uh, should have read up on these more, Peter. I didn't do my homework on these ones. But again, well, you can go to their it's, website. It's uh, new technology versus the 20-year-old SEALs Fair. technology that they use at uh, Mitsubishi. So Fair. This is all new stuff. So we're definitely upgrading the old cylinder head package here. One thing that we're not doing that we did do in the STI is porting the head. 
I think maybe you're just so boldly confident that even with the stock yeah, head, you're going to outpower me. I figure me. I don't need it. All right, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I think that is a wrap on this engine teardown episode. I had fun getting oily and dirty on Pete's motor. I'm not sure why he's trusting me with wrenches because, you know, I could potentially I'm sabotage sick. this whole deal. I'm sick. It's true. You are fighting the germs. And uh, I should also point out that uh, that whole HP Academy engine uh, building course that I've been watching has been really informative. And if you guys want to check that out, they have uh, given us a link, which we'll put in the description, including a coupon or a discount code so that you guys can go and sign up for that course and uh, follow along maybe as we build this thing or if you're planning your own engine build. They have a really detailed uh, program there where they break all of the lessons down into nice short snippets, like two to five minute long videos. So it's very easy to watch in you know, the amount of time that you have on your hands to get through it. And it's extremely informative. They got practical examples of how to build the engine. So it's not just theory, although there is theory. There's also very practical stuff in there. There's advice on uh, how to use the tools, what tools you need, and then how to use them properly. It's all there. So it really does walk you through how to build an engine in a very logical and I think a very professional way. So I'm excited to put that, that education that I'm getting to use on Pete's engine. And uh, you know what? He's got access to, so I'm pretty sure he's going to go watch those. He's going to want to double check my work. And uh, Yeah, triple check. So yeah, and you guys check it out in the description below, and uh, maybe I'll just play us out here. Call this one over, everyone. What? Got like a ninja stance going on oh, there, buddy. DP. Pure power stance. Look at the athleticism here, everybody. Oh yeah, just pulled a groin, too.